Okay, what we're going to do now is to talk a little bit about some general properties of the Vlasov equation. So this is before we launch into some linearized solutions. Uh, and the idea is um, that we would like to get some feeling for what kinds of motions and effects we might get out of uh, the Vlasov equation. And I'm going to talk, uh, these mostly come out, of uh, the details of these, let me say, uh, come out of uh, working in um, uh, this kinetic theory course, but I think it's good to understand these things. So the first, and I'll just kind of state them in statements, and we'll kind of talk about them. So the first is that motion is incompressible in 6D. Uh, X, V space, phase space. You remember mathematically that we had that V by dx or divergence of V was equal to zero and that the divergence in velocity space of the acceleration was actually equal to zero. So if we were to define a full six-dimensional <coughs> phase space variable, capital X, as a combination of X and V, then we would have that the time derivative x dot, which would be x little spatial position configuration space, x dot, v dot, and that would be v a. Um, but in fact, uh, well, it would be equal to then whatever, um, I guess in this way I wrote it, uh, v and q over m. Uh, E plus V cross B. But I guess what I wanted to get at was that if I took, in some sense, the divergence in full uh, X space, full six-dimensional phase space of X, that would actually be equal to zero. Now, what does all that mathematics mean? Well, first off, it's in six-dimensional phase space, so it's kind of complicated to make a plot of anything. So, you know, six dimensions a little tough. So we'll always, we'll cut back to, we could cut back to three and still plot something. But, you know, I can only get two on a paper easily. So let's suppose that we consider a two-dimensional phase space, which will just be, um, let's say, uh, X and V. And let's consider then some little blob is the best way to say it, or some people used to call this the water bag model. And so you got a water bag of particles here, okay? And the idea is that they range between some particular value of x, you know, to another one, and in certain certain region of, of speed space. So they're just localized in some particular region. Now let's suppose they move along. Okay, they go someplace in time. And so at some later time, we look at where are all these particles. Well, from our equation that x dot, you know, this is now two-dimensional phase space here, but anyway, from our equation x dot, we can see that it moves with a velocity v and an acceleration. So individual particle positions within here are going to move. However, because the motion is incompressible, what that means is that in fact the area of the part occupied by the particles is the same, okay, because of the uh, incompressibility. I can't compress it, but I can reshape it. So a little bit later, you know, maybe it kind of does this. Okay, let's just suppose it does that. The boundaries distort a little bit. And let's carry on maybe the next time step. So this is, you know, one time step and another time step. And maybe uh, it gets a little more exciting here, let's say, okay? But as long as I keep the area the same, it's indeed okay. Uh, let's keep going. Another time step. And let's do it up really good this time. So we'll make him do this. Uh, but as long as the area under that curve is the same, you know, it can distort tremendously. 
And the comment is, in the Flazov equation, because I don't create or destroy particles, I just shape things around and let regions of velocity in real space move along, this group of particles can come up with arbitrarily complicated, you know, little things like this. Now, what would the density, and, and so the, I guess I should say some critical things. Um, so the area is conserved in 6D phase space. It's actually in 6D. I've only done it in 2D, of course. Now, suppose I came along here, and I, I wanted to ask you what the density was as a function of real space. Well, you know, back here, if I plotted the density, all I would end up doing, I'm sorry, I want to, I want to go th cut through here, let's say, is um, as a function of x, and I, I can't really draw it there, so I'll draw it down here, but it would just be a block, okay, because all the particles lie between this point and that point. But when I get over here, okay, and I ask what's the density look like, well, it's getting, you know, I'm not sure this goes quite with the figure I've drawn, but it gets rather irregular, right? And it can have a heck of a lot of ir irregularity to it. Now, is that physically real? Well, the answer is that if I had just a little bit of collisions, okay, they would cause little fuzzinesses, okay, along these otherwise sharp edges where I have particles or no particles, okay? So weak collisions. But in a Flazov theory, you effectively say, I'm interested in processes very rapid compared to collisions. So I don't have any collisions at all. So if I have sharp irregularities, those irregularities may move around in phase space while preserving area in phase space, but those sharp irregularities maintain themselves. There's nothing that can relax them, basically. So the idea then is that Flazov equation solutions are going to be highly irregular, highly singular, highly, you know, gradients and all that sort of stuff. And only if I add just a little bit of collisions will be I be able to smooth out some of those extremely uh, strong um, irregularities. Um, and indeed, in a purely collisionless plasma, that's indeed what's observed experimentally as well. You have very sharp gradations of everything, and they're just preserved. They get manipulated around. The second general property of a um, Flazov equation is that it conserves entropy. You know, you always got the second law of thermodynamics and entropy increases and so forth and so on. And that entropy, at least in a kinetic sense, is defined as the integral d cubed x, the integral d cubed v of f log f. Or in plasma physics, we sometimes even generalize this to some generalized uh, entropy functional. Uh, this entropy functional turns out to be appropriate for Maxwellian, and you can generalize it to other than that. What you can show, and I won't go through the math of this, is that if you take the total time derivative ds dt, uh, those two derivatives don't count, so it turns out to be the same as partial of s with respect to t. But if you substitute in the Flazov equation, this turns out to be absolutely zero. What this tells you is that your usual definition and thinking of entropy is not very helpful. Entropy or some or any any function, all of the distribution function, is uh, is conserved because you remember the Flazov equation is effectively just that df dt is equal to zero, right? I don't create or destroy particles, and I don't really do anything, so to speak. I don't even have collisions smoothing out things. So the net result of this, you know, the way, the way I uh, increase entropy is usually I allow the system to evolve towards, say, a Maxwellian distribution function. But what this tells us 
is that in fact the solutions of the Flasov plasma do not actually even reduce the, relax the plasma to any particular distribution function. So that is to say this quantity entropy is this particular representation uh, is, is absolutely conserved. So solutions of the Flasov equation do not relax the plasma toward a Maxwellian. Usually, I, you know, as I relax towards a Maxwellian, I increase the entropy of the system. Um, I should say this is on a time scale t of order 1 over some frequency, which is much shorter than, sorry, 1 over nu, because um, collisions do relax the plasma on a t of order 1 over nu time scale. But that's in some sense longer time scale than uh, what we're interested in when we're talking about Flasov plasmas because we're interested in fast processes and there are no significant collisions on that time scale. A little more about this relaxation process. You can, however, show that if uh, the, well, you can show that the distribution function, a third property, if it's only a function of the kinetic energy of the particle, mv squared over 2 plus q phi, it turns out, um, is equal, is that it's stable for df naught de less than 0. So it's a, any monotonically decreasing function of the energy is stable against any instabilities. So what this means is that if I had a Maxwellian, F naught as a function of energy is, of course, e to the minus energy over kT, then, you know, that would just be something like this. So this is e to the minus e over t. That would be stable. So if I could imagine that I was going to have instabilities growing up and relaxing the plasma towards something, well, you know, a, a Maxwellian is going to be stable and not do that. But the funny thing about a plasma in a certain sense is, on the other hand, that if I had a distribution function f naught, which is a monotonically decreasing function of the energy, but not a Maxwellian, so let's suppose I had one that looks like this, Okay, and that's supposed to be downhill, all supposed to be df naught de less than zero. This is also stable. And a Flasov, no matter what kind of good Flasov kinetic theory analysis I do, I should not be able to find an instability which would be able to grow and rearrange this distribution function. So this is an equilibrium, okay distribution function for the long time scale of a Flasov equation. But when I put in collisions, okay, then collisions would try to relax it back to that. Now what kinds might not fit this criterion, hence might be unstable? Well, suppose I had F naught as a function of energy that came down and had a little bump, okay? Then you can sort of imagine that I would have in this region the possibility that if I could have a wave in here, it turns out, that takes this group of particles and puts them down here, I would remove energy from that group of particles and I could put that wa energy into something else, a wave. And this is actually what you have of a lasing action uh, in a typical, um, uh, um, in, in a laser type situation or an inverted population or whatever you want to call it. And so this is possibly unstable. And the plasma can relax. In this case, let's call it lasing action possible. Again, what we would be doing is taking energy out of the kinetic distribution function, namely this bump in energy out here, a kind of little beamlet, and we'd 
we'd be give, giving it up to the wave. It's actually how free electron laser works, by the way. But anyway, we'd be giving it up to the wave and, and therefore cause that wave to grow. So the, the strange thing here, again, is that this is a perfectly stable situation. And a Flasov equation does not try to reduce the plasma necessarily to the usual Maxwellian distribution. This could well be its final evolution. Uh, indeed, in this case, when it is unstable, you never know whether the plasma would choose to make this the final state or maybe just that or something like that because any one of those which are a monotonically decreasing function of the energy would be what the plasma is trying to strive to get. It's not a particular thing like a Maxwellian. It's any monotonically decreasing function of the energy. Okay, our final, um, I guess, property of the Flasov equation is then we can just, and this is a reiteration actually, but we can ask what are the sources of free energy that could drive instabilities? that would cause some relaxation of irregularities in the velocity space uh, 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 distribution function or real space. And those are basically the expansion free energy, pressure gradient, density gradient, so forth. Second, the kinetic energy of flows. And this is situations where we have beams, bump on tail, distribution functions, etc. And finally, gross velocity space anisotropies. You know, perpendicular temperature different, T parallel and T parallel loss cones, and so forth. Now, as we've talked about here then, the Flasov equation does not have a way of having entropy production. Okay, there is, you don't know where the distribution function is trying to go to, let alone how fast it's getting there, which is entropy production. Um, so a kind of question is, how would we get some form of dissipation or irreversibility in one of these plasmas, you know, faster than collisional effects. And basically what we do is we get into something we call Landau damping after Landau, a Russian physicist who first figured it out on a mathematical basis. And what in particular you get into is a so-called resonant wave-particle interaction, particles moving at the same speed as a wave same as the phase velocity of a wave, so they move with it. And then you can get into either nonlinearities in the interaction between the wave and the particle, producing an irreversibility, or very weak collisional effects right at that boundary, you know, because the particle's trying to stay right at the wave phase velocity. But in either case, those are what gives you an element of irreversibility in a collisionless plasma where it seems like you have no dissipation mechanisms, no mechanism of irreversibility. So next time what we'll do is we'll go in and, and derive this Landau damping and try to talk about physically what Landau damping means. Uh, and to many people, by the way, Landau damping is the real core of collisionless plasmas. I mean, it's a real key issue, let me put it that way, or central, fundamental issue.